We would be we we would just not be who we are unless we had music. So it makes us who we are. I think video more than any art can kind of like trick you into learning something. Yeah, it's 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 a very efficient method of teaching. The best short films for lifelong learning, recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love, with your host, Richard Lee. My name is Sam Morrill. I'm the director of curation at Vimeo. So what that means is I lead Vimeo's in-house curation team. So we are a team of five full-time curators that uh, spend most of our time looking for great videos on Vimeo and uh, supporting and promoting those videos across the site. Mm. I, I read somewhere that what you have is an insane task, and I could imagine that's true. I mean, the, the amount of content that you get from anywhere of any quality, how do you begin to even deal with that? Yeah, so it's it's an insane and arguably impossible task uh, to curate a site like Vimeo because, as you know, Vimeo is an open, share, open video sharing platform, so... We literally have tens of millions of videos uploaded to the site every year. Um, we currently feature about four staff picks per day, which uh, translates to about 1,300 per year. And in order to find those videos, we have a variety of different techniques. Um, first and foremost, um, we look to the Vimeo community. So everyone on the Vimeo curation team follows thousands of creators. So one of the first things I do when I come in every day is I, I you know, go into my feed, I see what those creators are uploading, and I kind of uh, will flag certain things to, to check out. And one of the most exciting things about curating for Vimeo is discovering new talent. So. To do that, we rely pretty heavily on the trending feed on Vimeo. So this is something that's accessible to everyone. It is algorithmically sourced, but there's a layer of curation on top of it. So we look we look to that every day, all day, to see um, what is organically trending on the site, because that way we can bring new creators into the mix that we weren't previously familiar with. And then I would say third-party curators, so independent curators, on and off of Vimeo. So, you know, an example of that would be uh, Boom, Motionographer, Short of the Week, Nowness, Director's Notes, Curious Brain. There's a, there's a bunch of these these channels that are really popular. And, you know, it's a two-way street. They're, they're looking to staff picks as much as we're looking to them. And then I would say the fourth area that we look to the most is the film festival world. So as of about five or six years ago, we started regularly attending all the major film festivals in the world. Um, going to their short screenings and seeing the short films that they were featuring at their festivals. Um, and that's become a bigger and bigger source over time of Vimeo staff picks. What are some that stay with you? I mean, if it stays with you, there's got to be something about it that's a bit special. Oh, there's so many that's, that stay with me. Um, one of the short films of, of the past two years that really has stuck with me is a short film called Home, directed by Daniel Malloy. We actually featured that on Staff Picks last week for a seven-day run exclusively on Vimeo uh, in conjunction with World Refugee Day. And it's this really, really powerful short film um, that basically takes the current refugee crisis and kind of flips it on, his, on its head where rather than have a, a Syrian family trying to get into the UK, you've got this British family uh, that has been thrust into the refugee crisis and is fleeing some un, unidentified threat back at home. And to be honest, I, I, a lot of people I know who've watched it, and this includes myself, feel kind of guilty when they watch it because what it does is it, it elicits this r emotional response that unfortunately you don't necessarily get when you watch the news or when you even watch documentaries. Aye, 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 aye. What's so powerful about this film is that it forces you to confront that and say, why is it that when I see this British family get thrown into a refugee crisis, 
I'm feeling all these emotions that I don't feel when I turn on the nightly news and witness things that are actually happening in real life to real people. It's this really, yeah, it's a really powerful film directed by Daniel Malloy. I highly recommend that people check it out if they have the opportunity to. What I'm really interested in is film and its intersection with education. I think that all film is educational, so I'm keen to get your opinion about where you see this overlap as well. A couple of the ones that I picked out from Vimeo, uh, one of them is called The Function of Music with Jad. Abramrod, yeah. Was there before speech, and so the original function of music was a kind of emotional communication system, like things fall on your toe and you go, ah, ah. Maybe music used to be proto-speech. I'm gonna play you some music. I'm gonna play some music. I'm gonna play some music. <clears throat> and I want you to tell me how it makes you feel. How does that make me feel? That makes me feel like I'm doomed. Yeah, Jad Abramrod actually is the co-host of a really popular radio show here in the U.S. called uh, Radio Lab, and he's all about sound. And the sound design on Radio Lab is just is incredible. And Jad Abramrod is the guy who does all the sound on it. Yeah, I think you know what. I think video more than any art can kind of like trick you into learning something. Um, you know, it's one thing to read about music in a textbook where they kind of break it down you know, and give you definitions and things, but it's something entirely different to watch, you know, a, a really kinetic four minute short that, uh, that walks you through different types of music and, you know, the emotional response and you're you know, sitting face to face with Jad Abumrad, who really knows a thing or two about music and sound and has some, has an interesting perspective on it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a very efficient method of teaching because you're working with visuals and, and sounds trying to find it as sort of a third short film to recommend i came across red rabbit There's a lot of teachers that uh, use Vimeo for language learning because film, particularly silent and di or you know, dialogue-free films, open up all sorts of possibilities for exploring language. Were you were you aware of that? To be honest, what I'm what I'm most familiar with is the way film schools use uh, staff picks and shorts from Vimeo as as references in their courses, as a source of inspiration, as a way to kind of see what sort of techniques people are experimenting with in terms of how it can be applied to just kind of like broader humanities. Um, hard to say, but I do think that there's something to be said for these kind of bite size videos that can be incorporated into, you know, a 45 minute class plan uh, you know, I think Red Rabbit would, would fit really nicely into like a course on psychology or something like that because it's, you know, it's kind of about how we all have, uh, you know, these secrets that we keep from one another that we assume that no one else could possibly relate to. But then, of course, when everything comes crashing down, you realize that we all have a red rabbit or I guess it's a gray rabbit and a raccoon, you yeah, know, right. that, we're, that we're hiding yeah, you know, at, yeah. at home. But I'm not, I, I'm, I, I cannot profess to be anyone who knows anything about education, so maybe I'm totally <laughs> wrong, but that's, that's my hunch. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I've watched my own children's viewing habits, and sometimes I worry that, uh, you know, quality film is perhaps a little bit marginalized to something a bit elitist or something. We, I mean, you don't, YouTubers, you know, they have a name for this, YouTubers. We don't have them so much on Vibi. I'd... I'm not sure quite what my question is, but, but what is that difference between Vimeo and YouTube? I mean, I, I've thought about this a lot, and recently, you know, I think the best way for me to kind of distinguish YouTube and Vimeo in a way that I, I, I don't mean in any sort of uh, derogatory sense is I, th I really think of YouTube as on-camera talent and Vimeo is behind the camera talent. Oh. I think that that's really the easiest way to distill the difference between the two platforms. That's, I hadn't and, thought about that before. That's a good distinction. Yeah. 
And with regards to new generation of kids that are growing up and the stuff that they like to watch, I think the million dollar question for me is, are they still going to want to watch webcam vids when they're 30 years old? You know, when they grow up a little and, you know, the world gets a little more complicated and maybe they're looking for some stories to kind of shed some light on what's going on around them. And I am inclined to say no. And here's the thing. I, th I think that a lot of the YouTube personalities have big careers ahead of them as actors, as, you know, media personalities, Absolutely. no doubt. Yeah. Like some, you know, th th we're going to get some news anchors. I'm, I have no doubt in 10 or 15 years that got their start on YouTube. And that's already kind of happening. I mean, you look at the Young Turks, they've kind of emerged as like this, this, this media player. But yeah, I, th I think what will end up happening is a lot of the directors that are popular on Vimeo are going to start working with on-camera personalities that are popular on YouTube, and they're going to create the next generation of, of Hollywood. That's, I think that's kind of the way it's going to work. Yeah. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.